a woman that needs no introduction. Oh, well, really? Stassi Schroeder. Thank yeah, I don't you? think you need an, I mean, you could give an intro. Uh, intro myself. No, I don't think you need no, an I li- introduction. I like this. I like okay. no, you know, no, no intro, introduction. No intro. I'm here. So happy you're here. Thank you. On the Good Guys podcast. Thank you. America's favorite podcast. Have you listened Second to Good Guys before? Tears. I have not, but I listen to your wife's every day. So yeah. that yeah. has to count for something. This needs it really... so much attention. The toast. Is no, it well. doesn't. It I just, <laughs> I love it. I just, I love it. It's like eating Tom Brady is flour. Yeah, that's we a good point. You know what? The, the toast. We all love the it. The toast. We all love it. It's obvious. It's obvious. But your podcast is also massive. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for a while. Yes. Well, like eight or nine years. So and, it's a long time. Yes. And yeah. what was that like transition like? Like, why did you start a podcast? And Oh, like, I don't okay. know if you ever talk about that, but like, what was like the impetus for just starting your podcast and how did that? Well, okay. Happen? Well, you know, we have like a mutual best friend in common, we Taylor do. Strecker. We do. We love her. Yes. And I was living in New York with my ex-boyfriend who, not the most, we'll call him man bun. We won't, we won't, we won't say his name. Okay. Sure. Yeah. He also was a radio host. So I was constantly going to Sirius XM and visiting them and spending time with them and seeing what they did. And I was like, I could never do this. Mm-hmm. I could never just fill up space and just keep talking. And I'm like, I, I was in awe of how they did it. And then an offer came in to do a podcast. And I'm like, Fuck no, like there's literally no <laughs> way I've seen how I've seen mm. what Taylor has to do. I see what they do. Mm. And then I'm like, you know what? I could be one of the first like, you know, reality people to like get on this train to like try something new. I like to be the first mm-hmm. at things. Um, I gave it a shot and I just never stopped. Like that first time that I did it, I would literally pause every four minutes and be like, <gasps> <laughs> <Yeah>. <gasps> yeah. like coming up from air for air, like in the water. It was so hard. But now I love it. So you trained yourself to be a podcast. Yes. And I, and I do. I, I think I give Taylor Strecker a lot of credit for teaching me how to talk. She's literally the best. Have you met Taylor? I haven't, but I find it interesting that you got an offer to do a podcast, which shows that you started a couple of years ago, because now I, I, I think if like, I don't know, Michelle Obama wanted a podcast, you know, Dear Media would be like, well, what, what themes are we thinking about? <laughs> like, no one's getting a podcast anymore because it's so inundated. If yeah. my son was like, I want to do a podcast, I'd be like, have you considered OnlyFans? No, 100 like, There's no fucking money. In it. <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Every day there's a new announcement about a new podcast. And I'm just like, F- do I need to start doing something new? Do I need to quit my podcast? Is it no, time to you, quit? No, you you're, don't. You're established. Is it, don't. Is it you're time to start something new? No. The roots are in. No. The roots are down. Yeah. No, but these folks starting new ones, it's just terrible. It's just dumb. It's like, don't people realize it takes so long. You don't start making money for a really long time. And yeah. you have to keep it up. Mm-hmm. You have to be consistent. And it's it's not just like an easy revenue type of situation. Like it. No, unless know. you're us. Yes. <laughs> no, we're crushing Unless you're it. us who Podcast. started about a year ago and are just chart topping. Everybody use our codes. codes use all right? the codes. I will use say, all the codes. I see you guys everywhere though. Thank so you. I know y'all are doing well because I see clips everywhere. I read about it wow. in, you know, like the news. God bless you. You know, yeah. like the, the so tabloids much. and Thank stuff. You. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's <laughs> news. <laughs> like CNN. <laughs> what is that one? Suncrest? The Sun the Sun Times? What is that? Oh, that the is Chicago so Chicago Sun Times. Oh, no, I, I think thought it's you were like talking a big tabloid. No, it's fine. Like the British, isn't that like a British tabloid? The, the Daily Sun? Mirror. Who were we just talking about having on the podcast that was uh, had a big UK following and we were going to- A gonna... couple, a, a British couple? A random couple. That's okay, whatever, aloof. But podcasts right now are like, I have so many friends who've had some success in TV or movies or just being public people and they all go pitching a reality show and I'm like, go on. <laughs> and they're like- it's gonna be like me traveling. I'm like, uh huh. And they're like, trying food. It's gonna be Bourdain esque. And I'm like, kill yourself. <laughs> I'm like, because the way that is like my dream though, and everyone, me it's, every, too. it's literally every single person alive's yes. dream. It's to everyone's do that. dream. Yeah. And like podcasting, there are very few luminaries who are quite good at it because everyone's like, I'm pretty hilarious when I talk to my friend Jen. And they're like, <laughs> if you, I, the, the amount of, oh my God, I love overhearing conversations of group of friends when they're like, we need our own reality show. Do you, Jan? <laughs> do you, Jan? Need no. your own reality show. Jen, you're not getting one. It's never going to happen. <laughs> I no. had a friend's wife who was like, me and the girls are going to go and podcast ourselves at wine night in a busy restaurant. So they go and get, they go to Guitar Center. 
they get some janky equipment. <laughs> and it's literally just the sound of the bar. <laughs> <laughs> and it's literally just like the worst audio quality. Yeah. And it's just them yenting for 20 minutes. And they're like, so then I told him, hi, can I get mozzarella sticks? Like, this is not a good podcast, guys. So silly. So stupid. Um, but, but you took your podcast and made it a tour. Yes. And I was fortunate enough to come to a show. And it was fantastic. Thank you yes. so much. And obviously you did it just for the money. But like, why else did you do the podcast tour? Like, what is like the... Like, did you want to tour? Like, is that a, like, like what's, what was the vision for the tour? Well, I started touring back in 2019. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Taylor did it with me too. You God know, damn it. she's yeah. going to be so pissed at me. I was doing it in 2019 <laughs> and it was basically my version of it, like, I was living out all of my fantasies, like being a musical theater nerd mm. growing up. So I'm like, I'm just going to put my own production out there straight up with Stasi. Like a, it's like a live variety show, if you will, because I'm not a, comedian. I don't do stand up. I'm not like your wife. I can't do that shit. And so that was my whole idea with it. Um, and then I realized that that costs a lot of money that's coming out of my pocket. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then when we just did this last tour, I'm like, we're not we're not doing that. Mama wants to make money this time around. Mm -hmm. So we streamed it down. And honestly, I just love it. I, I, I really love being on stage. I love connecting with the audience. I think it's just, it's exhilarating. I love traveling around the country. It's, I love everything about touring. And I feel like everybody's doing a podcast tour now. Like if we're I started it in 2019. We're considering it. So you, you, were you were early. You were early <laughs> podcasting. You were early touring. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool. I love being first. It's like one of my fatal flaws. What's the next big first you're considering? Leak it here. Um, you know, I need, I, oh. I'm constantly asking Lowe's over there. Uh, I call her my CLO. She's like my right hand man. <laughs> I am constantly asking her. I'm like, well, we need to get into some sort of new technology that no one's heard about. We Stassi have to be first at something. You in the metaverse. Correct. Thank <laughs> yeah. you for that idea. Yeah, Look into that later. Yes. Okay. Chat G Stassi. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so funny. If you just like ask questions and it's just in your complete tone of voice. Take that it. Exists. You write that it. down. Does it? Really? What's it called? It's an AI for celebrities. Really? Oh, uh, there's enough video of me out there. I've asked, like, write a speech in the voice of Josh Peck, and it all starts with, what's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I hate myself. This is not good. Oh, um, it, I, I'm so interested, because you mentioned this this uh, ex of yours in New York who, mm -hmm. is, who will not be named. Yeah. And then there's that other one, Pax, Max, Jack, whatever. Who cares yeah. about him? Him. And now you Even have though this, I like him, but whatever. You have this beautiful life. You found your prince. Thank you. Have you. This beautiful family. I'm interested if you feel free or if you're open to sharing, like, can you attribute, like, was there a transition? Was there something that changed in you about, like, the people you were looking for? Or, like, what, how do you think you ended it, ended up with this, this great guy? I 100% did everything differently. I, before I met Bo, every time I was dating, I oh, was so intense and I rushed into mm. things. And sometimes we would move in together within a month. Like, it was just, that's how I operated. And so this time I, I went for someone that was different. I mean, he wears overalls, mm. you know, he's like all tatted up, but like he's, he's just not what I normally would date. I think he's handsome as fuck, but he was just quirkier than who I would date. Mm. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to give this guy a shot and we're going to take it really slow. And we just casually dated for six months, saw other people. I didn't put any pressure on it. I, I really enjoyed the time that I had living alone, being by myself, being able to do what I wanted. So I wasn't like, oh, I need this relationship. Yeah. And then I realized, again, it was like after like six months that like, wow, this person is, he is, his moral compass is incredible. It's, and he is so supportive and encouraging of what I do and who I am as a person. And I feel like no matter what, I can be myself around him. I'm never feeling like I have to be something I'm not. And it just kind of clicked. But I just think because I did everything differently. Yeah. I, I shook up my, my pattern. You know, most people get used to just mm -hmm. doing the same thing and because that's what they feel comfortable doing. Even if it's chaotic and it's not yeah. working for them, they still continue doing the same shit because it's the like the comfortability of it is what they're used to and what they like. 
Yeah. You know, did that was that English? Yes, totally. You okay. you love your husband and he right. loves you. Thanks. And, and <laughs> but but my main takeaway is how uh, often does Bo wear overalls? Um, it's it's rarer nowadays. But okay. the other day he did he threw on some sweat pant overalls. Wow, brave. Yeah, so. brave. Does he drink a lot of fluids? Because I drink I pish too much to wear overalls. Can you imagine how six seven times a day on strapping? It's a whole thing. That's like an excellent thing. point. It's a whole production. I've, I've never brought that up. And to imagine him. how embarrassing it is going to the urinal in overalls. Wait, hold on. What do you? What do you? What do you? <gasps> pull, pull them down to your ankles. Wait, hold on. <laughs> what the fuck do you do? And I'm not joking. I've never thought about that, and I cannot wait to call him on my way home and be like, "What the fuck do you do in public in a bathroom? What do you do? He probably has to just go and pretend like he's pooping. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I have so urinal. many questions. He looks like, like a kindergartner. Yeah, you know, full down <laughs> underwear. Down. We're like the complete antithesis of the overall. Oh, please, I wouldn't like literally. I think it's like the last thing on earth that I would be comfortable in. Well, I mean, same. I don't. I don't like an overall. No, but it's he's also in. He's in, he's a man in good shape. It's just it's too much. <laughs> but I will say, women wear like jumpers, which are like female. Uh, oh yeah. Like and that's women, but women impossible. Yes. It's yes. the urinal. True. It's the it's urinal. urinal. It's the, the urinal, urinal makes yes. overalls not for men. Yeah. No, it's a <laughs> fact. <laughs> not for men. It's our no. new story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I'm interested to know too, like, what do you think it was? I mean, and I'm not just saying this of like I, I, let's just say people who started on reality in general, like you feel like one of the rare people who have transitioned and built a business for yourself. Like, Thank you. Was it born out of like, you know, everything I've ever done was born out of fear. <laughs> 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 like, oh God, it's all going to crumble. But like, what do, what do you, where do you think that came from? This episode of the Good Guys podcast is brought to you by Haya. Typically, children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. Ew. Filled with two teaspoons of sugar, unhealthy chemicals, and other gummy junk growing kids should never eat. That's why Haya was created, the pediatrician-approved, super-powered, chewable vitamin. While most children's vitamins are filled with five grams of sugar, what are you, nuts are supposed to be vitamins, and can contribute to a variety of health issues, Haya is made with zero sugar and zero gummy junk, yet it tastes so great and is perfect for picky eaters. Now, I was with Josh in LA last week with his beautiful sons, Max and Shai, and all I got to say is Max absolutely loves his Haya. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they'll love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. All I got to say is Michaela and Harry also love their Haya. We've worked out a special deal with Haya folks for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order, 50%. To claim this deal, you must go to HayaHealth.com slash goodguys. This deal is not available on their regular website. So go to H-I-Y-A, H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash good guys and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. This episode of the Good Guys podcast is brought to you by Caraway. Okay, folks, here's the deal. Every single Ben Soffer celebrity cooking video that you see on Instagram, every single one is made in Caraway pants, Caraway pots and pants. And the reason being, they are unbelievable nonstick pans. They're gorgeous, gorgeous. And I love them. They're aesthetically pleasing and they're also just wonderful, wonderful pans. So I highly, highly recommend them. I use them every single day. I use them too much. I use them too much. Every single time I use them, I clean them to the best of my abilities. Claudia tells me that I didn't clean them enough. And then she yells at me. And so I use them too much. Caraway is so, so good. I use them every single day. And with so many collections to explore, they're sure to be a Caraway for every kind of cook. Caraway's internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home and comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. They really are just so gorgeous. You should check them out. So ditch the chemicals with Caraway. Caraway Homes' non toxic kitchenware features a chemical free ceramic coating. So food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard to pronounce chemicals will leach into your healthy ingredients. All sets come equipped with complimentary easy access storage solutions to keep the kitchen tidy. And that is Claudia's MO. She needs a tidy kitchen. And when I tell you 
it really, they make it so easy. There are holders, there's covers, it's just, it's amazing. And they're all in these exact same aesthetic too. Really uh, just a fantastic product. Non-toxic, easy cooking, well-loved, well-loved. Clearly, I love it. I love it. You should absolutely love it. Visit carawayhome.com slash goodguys to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So go to carawayhome.com slash goodguys or use goodguys at checkout. Carawayhome.com slash goodguys. C-A-R-A-W-A-Y-H-O-M-E dot com slash goodguys. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Um, I think my whole life I've been someone whose like self-esteem is tied into how much I'm accomplishing. Mm. And so that's why I'm constantly trying to do something new. And I also get bored of things quickly and I'm like, well, what else can we add to it? And I'm trying to teach myself to slow down focus on one thing at a time, take the pressure off. Like we can't do everything all at once. That's something I've learned since having kids. Like I can't hustle the way that I used to. It's just impossible, but it just makes me feel good about myself to be accomplishing things. Honestly. Yeah. Speaking of kids, you both have two young guns Yeah. Mm-hmm. and you're both in the exact same life stage. So I can't comment on it at all because uh, unfortunately they lost Leo. So I have, no I am so sorry. I, I have no children, so but you have two beautiful children. So yeah, thank you. It sucked. But I'm just like curious, especially as like both very much in the entertainment space, like having a, you have a one-year-old? I have a four-month-old and a three-year-old. Okay. Josh is a one-year-old and, and a five-year-old. Five. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. We're in it. Although I'm more just teeing it up. You are, guys can hit are it Are you around. and Claude going to have to get off the needle when you guys start trying? Yeah, 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 Zemps. yeah. The yeah. Terzeps. Yeah, we, you know we, I'm we, the Wagoves. We, oh, we, the Wagoves. I haven't heard we, that we, one yet. The Wagoves. We, we, are, we, are, we are going. Well, I'm not going to actually. It's one of the again <laughs> unfair mess. advantages not, not of being sol- a man. Not in solidarity. Scene? I think it. Might. Oh my gosh! The got, way that that would. By the way, in solidarity, she doesn't need me going back to 300 pounds. <laughs> like that would only stress her out more. I, I'm sure like, you have a couple two-headed sperm from the Ozemps. For it, sure. For sure, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. It's good. You got some mutated sperm. We're, we're good. No, we're good. We're good. It's so funny. My dad uh, gained, it's not funny. He gained 150 pounds while my mom was pregnant. He literally just like sat there and ate with her. I'll show you two pictures side by side. A skinny man and then a man that looked- 150? 140. Uh, still? It, wow. Wild. That's a lot. Wild. Yeah. So I'm, that's possible for me. <laughs> Yeah. All right, and I'm going to stay on the needle. Okay. I'm going to stay. I went okay, off. I went off Ozempic for a month and my brain was just like, you need food. You need food. You need food. And it's like, I know I don't need food, but I need you to shut the fuck up. Does it change your personality? Do you feel different? Do you feel like I'm different from last time? I was like, I'm not talking about. No, I mean. I'm not talking about from the outside. I mean, do you feel oh. the same way? Like if I take a Xanax at night to go to bed, no. I feel like kind of chill. Zip. <laughs> you know? No, no, no difference whatsoever. Okay. The only difference is my life does not revolve around my next meal. That's what Taylor says. Uh, and yeah. that's really freeing, honestly, yeah. like to not be constantly thinking that if I, if I miss lunch, I'm not going to die. Yeah. But I thought I was going to die. Yeah. There was an article where Jillian Michaels was attacking Oprah for for profiting from Ozempic because she's behind Weight Watchers and they have now sort of. They are starting to integrate it. Yes. Though. Yeah. And also she ca- called it an easy way out, which I took issue with. I take issue with that, too. And I, I also just think that unless you're somebody who's struggled, like someone who hasn't struggled with their weight isn't allowed to have an opinion yeah. about this like I hate when I see a bunch of skinny people being like it's the easy way out I'm like you're just jealous because we're all gonna be looking like you like, yeah, and well, you're gonna be like what makes you special now like, and the that's... answer was always nothing exactly the answer was always nothing so but Ozempic really is just step one like Josh has seen this firsthand like I I've never gone to the gym yeah. and I'm like with a trainer twice a week the last four months mm-hmm. because I'm finally light enough that I can mentally do it. Yes. I go there. I'm not huffing and puffing. I can complete these things. People that go to the gym when they are at their top weight, it's really, really hard. Imagine. Yeah. Not only to motivate yourself, but to be productive in the gym. Yeah. So when people say easy way out, it's it's just the beginning. You don't want to be flabby. I, like you're going to lose all the weight and then you got to- Of course. And you got to tone up. I also think that this is what her, her livelihood 
is mm-hmm. directly affected by this. So I think that that's, of course, she's going to say something like that. But also we're, as a society, we're constantly trying to find ways to make life easier for ourselves. So like, why is this any different? It's like getting an epidural. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like totally. we found a way to make childbirth less painful. Now we found a way to make it easier on people who struggle with their weight. Like what's the issue? I don't understand. Fat, pe- fat people and Jews. The world hates them both. It's the it's, it's, just, it's rough out here for us. <laughs> Feel bad for us, will ya? You think it's easy running entertainment? No. Um, what about those people that take their infants and throw them in the pool so well, that they like flip okay. over and then so, and then you're like, why did you, Bo, why'd you, why'd you, why'd you just Wait, throw your infant in the we pool? We had me and Bo had every intention of being those parents first time around. When I got pregnant, <laughs> we looked at all of these TikTok videos on people just throwing their fucking it's infant nuts. in the pool yeah. because I. My worst, one of my worst fears is my children drowning. Yeah. Like, and that's so if you can start teaching them how to survive in the water from the beginning, why wouldn't you? Which we didn't. No, like, but we, we no, didn't. But, I, I, no, but, there, but there has to be a better way to do it than the videos that I see <laughs> where they like take the baby as if it's like a cinder block. It's literally and like, they're just like <laughs> they talk, it. have you seen these videos? Yeah, Jump no, into an eight a, foot pool and they're like, oh, oh no, Sally's going to float to the top by the end of the video. Don't worry. And what if she doesn't? It must be how they've done it for I don't hundreds it. of years. You what know, about these kids getting aggressively it. baptized. You've seen those vids? Of course yeah, I've I seen those too. Oh, yeah. oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Mm-hmm. God help you if you're Greek Orthodox. Because <laughs> those priests, they like, take the baby, they're like, like and little Johnny is drowning. And it's just so funny how like we were so uh in like it's so important to hold the babies like back of the head. Even if you're not a parent, you know that. Yeah. And then you watch these videos and they're like fucking snapping the kid's neck. <laughs> like, crazy. Um my wife's Irish Catholic and I'm Jewish, so we decided not to go the baptism route, but mm-hmm. we kind of like give them everything. What are you do you and Bo have like similar backgrounds? Like was there a harmony there? Um, I was raised Catholic. I'm from New Orleans, so right. a super Catholic city. New Orleans. Yes. And I just didn't like it. Mm-hmm. I there, I just remember this one story. My my sister, my little sister, we have different dads. And um my mom wanted to get her baptized Catholic, and the priest told her no because we had different dads. And I was so traumatized by that that I'm like, this is not a religion I want to be a part of. If a priest is going to deny my sister, like it was so weird. For and sure. it, like I've, I've like it's like stayed with me. So I'm not somebody that practices. I'm not religious. I I I think I believe in God. I I, I just try and be a good person. But mm. Bo is, he, you know, he he's Christian. He listens to Christian music and I have to listen along. He so, is. Yeah. Our little mm. Christian king. <laughs> This episode of the Good Guys Podcast is brought to you by KiwiCo. KiwiCo delivers seriously fun learning for kids of all ages through hands-on projects and activities. Each month, kids receive crates packed with engaging hands-on activities designed to introduce them to exciting science, technology, and art concepts. STEM folks, we're training them for STEM. There's always something new for kids to discover, like engineering robots or learning about the science of ice cream. With nine monthly programs to choose from, KiwiCo has something for kids of all ages, ranging from infants and preschoolers to teens and beyond. And you can just select the bracket that you are. So I got KiwiCo for my nieces and nephews and also for Josh's son, Max. And I picked out the colorful chemistry set and they absolutely loved learning about science. And with all the beautiful colors, they absolutely loved it. So discover real science, technology, engineering, art, and math concepts through fun, hands-on projects delivered to your door each month. Each crate is designed by real experts and tested by kids to ensure that every experience is age-appropriate, engaging, and most importantly, seriously fun. Crates come with everything needed for kids to build, including materials and instructions. You'll be surprised at how high quality the materials are, too. So... Redefine learning with play. Explore projects that build confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month on any crate line at KiwiCo.com with promo code GOODGUYS. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com, promo code GOODGUYS. Christian King, yeah, our house, you know, I hear all the music and I'm like, can we change it i just have an i have an issue with christian music it's the (laughs) same words 
over and over again for eight minutes long. It's like the Creed? same. Is he listening to Creed? No, like Christian music. Like Chris, more Christian than that. The Killers. <laughs> By the way, full Christian rock band. Really? The Killers. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Okay, I'm not talking Think about, about... All their songs. Think it, about it. Isn't it one of the? If you were that time, man. Hey, I'm I'm the gun, man. Yeah, that one song is a little weird. <laughs> but the rest of them, seriously. Really? really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, Google. I'm not talking about undercover okay. Christian bands, <laughs> like Christian <laughs> bands. I understand. Okay. Right. Christian music. So yes, he's Christian, and he takes Hartford to church sometimes on Sundays. And Cute. I'm like, um. I'll have I'll, I'll do some self care Sunday while you guys go. I feel uncomfortable when everyone's singing all together, like hymns. Yeah, <laughs> fair. I I truly do. Like I start feeling like hot and sweaty, and then it makes me feel like, oh my god, am I like satanic that like I'm having this physical reaction to everybody singing together? Mm-hmm. No, I just think singing together makes me feel weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of pressure. How do you feel at musicals? <laughs> <laughs> Well, no, I'm not singing. I'm so watching okay. the musical. I'm, yeah, I'm watching the musical. Yes. Now it's I need like, to look up the killers. It's like being in the audience. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. Now everyone who's Christian is going to be like, oh, Stasi's evil and crazy. But I just feel weird when I'm required to sing in an audience. Do you, boo? I agree. <laughs> I, I like I try to look. I, I love being Jewish and I try to give my son the culture and things like this. And there's wonderful things. I also have had friends during like the high holy days, Rosh Hashanah, mm-hmm. as the Jews say, that went to they just wanted to go to a random temple to like see the, the service. And they were like, if you're not a member of the temple, you can't come for the service i'm like it's the highest holy day like yeah can't it's, they sit in the back <laughs> that's the time where they get the biggest check <laughs> <laughs> so us. just make a donation <laughs> that's all it is they just want a little donation and then you can sit what's the can you go into madison square garden and see billy joel for free oh no. my god <laughs> make a donation to oh, billy you're not just helping like you're our a cause. donation to, to god <laughs> you're not helping our cause <laughs> please there's, there's no penance. handouts <laughs> No handouts. You want to find God here? I hope you have American Express. From Mr. Brightside to Pressure Machine, the killers are still singing about God. Wow. But is it a a non-denomination? Like is no. it a Unitarian? <laughs> no, 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 full no full Christian. Full Christian rock. Full Christian. Okay. Um, by Shut the way, up. Claudia and Bo are the same person. Claudia also, as a devout Jew, listens to the most Christian music. <laughs> like, really? Yeah. yeah. She also like once a year uh sees uh like goes to the Rockettes and sees like she's obsessed with Christmas. Obsessed. Oh, so my wait, and, no, I love Christmas. And that transition. Are you not a country music fan? No, but so okay. is Bo and Claudia. But I know so that's I what listen. it is. If yeah. you like country music, then you, you like, like Christian, Christian music. music. That is, yeah. It, because they're also both singing about the same thing for eight minutes. Yes. But it's, but Correct. it's, but it's nice. It's live. I like live music. I like something that like, I know I could sit, uh, I could watch somebody on a single guitar and I would enjoy it. Like, that's nice. And that is, I think like Christian and country. Okay. Good on you. Yeah. Good on you. I did. But like, I think I've also been trained to love it. I did By Claudia? Yeah. Yeah. I think it just played so much. It's like that song. You guys uh, started dating though when Imogen you were Heap. younger. I, I yeah. you can't change me at this point. I understand. Yeah. Fair. Do your kids listen to Image and Heap's Happy Song? Wait, hold on. First of all, I've never, I haven't heard someone say Image and Heap in so long. That was like my senior year of high school. All I listened to was Fru Fru and Image and Heap. So it's taking me back. Mm. What the fuck is the Happy Song? The Happy Song is a song uh, that Jackie Ashray Weinrib uh, plays to soothe her son. And but, I heard it 24 7. Play it. Uh, okay. And it's now like the most viral song for like kids to calm down. How have I not like weird? No clue. You, neither of you heard it? Is this I, a I new song? Is this uh, new music? Is newest. she putting out new music? <laughs> She's putting out music for her children that like soothe them. It's, yeah, happy song. Oh boy. Terrifying. This We're podcast get is so strike. educational for me. <laughs> We're gonna get a YouTube. Strike. Okay, you don't oh, have to. You don't have to play the whole thing. Sorry. No. Like, no. <laughs> I'm just, no. By the way, I'm so the glad song you... honestly is like the devil to me. Like it's playing on repeat in my head because she played it literally for two straight weeks in Utah. Right. Two straight weeks. But you should try it. I 100. percent I'm gonna go home and try it. Mm-hmm. Thank you for this tip. You're welcome. We're from very a non-parent. Whole, we're very wow. wholesome podcast. Very <laughs> yeah. wholesome. We're good people. We are. We are, and uh, we love ourselves. <laughs> We're good peeps. <laughs> my my wife went to twelve years of Catholic school, and it was so revealing in this moment recently. My son, your kids need uh, ear tubes yet? No ear tubes? Not God. yet. Thank mm. God. 
My, both my kids, they have uh, defective eardrums. It's, <laughs> it's a Jewish gene. She's it's, not going to get them. They they have have tubes and Christians. <laughs> plenty of tubes, plenty of seasonal allergies. So my little guy who's 14 months is going to get ear tubes. And we were doing his pre-op forms. And the doctor's assistant calls me to give me all the info. And she says, can I ask you a question? I go, yeah. She says, who filled out the forms for Shy?" And I said, my wife. And she said, did she go to Catholic school? I was like, yeah, 12 <laughs> years. She goes, she has the most beautiful handwriting. Oh, I have wonderful mm-hmm. handwriting. I've ever you seen. Mm-hmm. So jealous. And she's like, I went to Catholic school. She's like, we recognize, were, I didn't realize that was a Catholic school thing. They were so mean and so harsh <laughs> about handwriting. I was like, holy shit, nice silver lining. It's cursive, right? right? It's gorgeous. It's cursive handwriting. It's beautiful. Cursive, they're not teaching that anymore, I hear. Right. They're that, not? disturbs me oh it yeah. fully disturbs me so like my children won't be able to read my letters to them mm-hmm. mm. that's wild did you know there's new math yeah i've heard that there is like new what ways to solve equations but i never oh. planned on being a parent that was going to help my kid with math like I've, mm. I've always planned on being a parent that was going to pay for a math tutor for sure mm. have you had <laughs> how old your old is three three so I'm not sure if you, I just recently had my first bit of bullying experience with my son getting pushed at a program, at, like, like a, at a by another kid, by another kid, and I have the first time. <laughs> yeah, Hartford's like bit on a regular basis. Oh, he's been bit. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but this was like a dickhead kid. Like at school, he's been bit, and the, the school is so good that yeah. they'll be like, "We've broken it down. We have video footage of it, and the bike. This is why it happened, and we've talked to both parents already. And like it was, this was him at some like after school program with just a little jerk kid who's just being a jerk, like mean, like yeah. aggressively mean. And I never thought I would be that dad, but I, my wife wrote me, and I was like, "What's this fucking kid's name?" <laughs> and she goes, "I really want to say it. I'm never gonna see no, this kid. No, don't say it. Don't it. say it." This episode of the Good Guys Podcast is brought to you by Hero Bread. You know how much we love Hero Bread. And now they have this new beautiful recipe made with heart-healthy olive oil for an added boost of healthy fats. I mean, now it's, it's, there's no competition. There's just absolutely no competition. Hero Bread has zero to one grams of net carbs, zero sugar, and is high in fiber. And it tastes so good. It's so soft, so fluffy, so delicious. I really... It's amazing. I Every single time I eat it, I'm like, how in the world are there uh, zero to one grams of net carbs, no sugar, and this is high in fiber and tastes good? It's, it's magic. It's total magic. Hero Bread products are delicious and flavorful, offering the soft, fluffy experience that you love when enjoying, I don't know, maybe a nice tuna sandwich, or maybe you're going to make a nice turkey sandwich, or you could go to my Instagram and look for any recipes and incorporate Hero Bread. Get healthier with Hero Bread's new recipe, which uses antioxidant-rich olive oil, which has been shown to reduce cholesterol and minimize risks of heart disease. So, folks, what more do you need to know? Hero Bread is offering us 10% off your order of their new recipe. That's 10% off. So go to Hero.co and use code GOODGUYS24 at checkout. That's G-O-O-D-G-U-Y-S-2-4 at H-E-R-O dot C-O. Hero.co, code GOODGUYS24. Enjoy. This episode of the Good Guys Podcast is brought to you by our friends at Drizzly. Picture this absolutely nightmarish scenario. You're hosting friends for the big game. It's neck and neck in the fourth quarter, and suddenly you realize you're out of drinks. Who forgot to order enough spritz? Don't panic, because you can save on a huge selection of beer, wine, and spirits Then get them delivered to your watch party with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Personally, for the big game, I'm going to be in Florida. Friends, family, food, drinks. Last thing I want to do is go to a liquor store and pick out all of the various things for all of the annoying people, you know, I have a sister-in-law who absolutely loves martinis. I have a brother-in-law who loves beer. Everybody loves spritz. But ultimately, I don't want to go through the aisles looking for, okay, is this the type of vodka she wants? Is this the type of vodka she wants? Is this the type of beer he wants? Ultimately, I can do everything on 
Drizzly. I know for a fact that I'm going to get the brands that I want because you can search it and they can come from multiple stores. But we're going to watch the big game. We're going to eat some great food. We're going to have some great booze. And it's all going to be made incredibly easy with Drizzly. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. You know, having been so public and, and in, you know, uh, an incredible reality TV career, when, you know, the great reality TV moments are probably, for us as viewers, are probably, I would imagine, the moments where you go, oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. What's that like? That's... Uh, it's so complicated and nuanced. I wrestle with it all the time because, it, you know, moments where like I backhanded Kristen, not proud of that. I don't like it. So when people come up to me, they're like, oh my gosh, that moment or another moment that I was being bitchy or it was outrageous. Mm. I'm, I feel like I let those people down when they meet me because I can't react the way that they want to. I'm like, I don't feel that way anymore. Mm. I was 23 years old. Like mm-hmm. we shouldn't be glorifying me backhanding someone like that's I don't say it like that I don't try and teach them a lesson (laughs) but I'm just like okay I'm not really enthusiastic about it and so I start getting in my head like oh my god am I like I'm so different that do I even have any value in this industry anymore because people want me to be the way that I used to be but I'm not that person anymore and it's kind of a mind it is and when you watch like do you see other people, if they're popping, having their moment on reality TV, but they're really doing things that are out of pocket, embarrassing, but and it's gold for reality. But do you watch them and go like slippery slope? Like you're on you're on the the. Uh, n- no, because, you know, you can you can take those lemons and make lemoncino out of them. Really? You know, you can always take something bad and make it something else like truly so i don't really think that way when i see other people doing stupid shit <laughs> so no judgment zone yeah <laughs> well we got we do these speak pipes which is like advice we have a fandom they're called the morons and <laughs> and really? uh they had they are. some they're really called the morons did no. they name themselves or no we named them That's but like nice of you but like i checked into my hotel and this girl was like i'm a moron <laughs> meet my boss i'm like oh i hope she knows <laughs> <laughs> so they had some questions for you, or okay. at least like they love advice. They love oh, or just some uh, in general. We'll see. Sometimes right. I'm, I'm I'm a little unhinged when it comes to advice. Good. I wouldn't ever take my advice. Perfect. You know, I'm not an authority on anything. So, but here we go. Next pod. Don't take my advice. <laughs> Good title. Okay. Hey guys. So I need some advice. Last night was crazy. My husband's grandmother passed away and I got into a fender bender (laughs) and when he was coming home from that situation he stopped by the site the wreckage which there was none because he wanted to quote unquote help but I had it under control I work in the auto body repair industry so I do this sort of thing every day and I have not confronted him totally about it. We talked about it a little bit after it happened. But I just would like your advice. Do I tell him how upset I am that he came and, like, mansplained it? Or do I just kind of let it go because his grandma passed away? <laughs> okay, I didn't. And then talk about it another time. This this is why we call them morons. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, w- I, was I gonna, don't need your LinkedIn. I was going <laughs> to. I'm giving you advice. I worked at an auto body shop from 03 to 05. And then, um, yes, please. Mansplaining is annoying, but we you, you have to learn to cope. It's a necessary evil. We just, we just, us women, we just, you got to learn to cope with mansplaining. It's fine every now and then. His fucking grandmother just died. Like, not the time. Not the time. Don't women women splain yeah. more than men ma- men splain? I I feel like I'm getting splained all day. I would agree with that. <laughs> right? I would agree with that. Constantly you know splain. what? You know what? We women need to get over the mansplaining because we do more splaining you splain. anyway. Yeah. Why Non-s- are we? D- you're right. I'm why sorry. is this a thing? You know what? Yes. Feminism. You're right. <laughs> That's the title of the episode. <laughs> yes. Feminism. Finally, someone saying it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I agree. Guy, his grandma died. Yeah. Get over it. Yeah. Get over it. This is what she calls in about. 
I mean, mansplaining is totally unacceptable, but this broad, <laughs> she, no, <I'm> <laughs> um, yeah, I would say that. And, and I think you have to be careful because yes, mansplaining is annoying and dumb, but like he, it might've been some veiled he might have been genuinely trying to help you and that's it just right. like came off as mansplaining. That's that's Bo to a T. Mm -hmm. I've never felt like when he is trying to teach me something or explain something to me that it's like he's talking down to me. So he's genuinely trying to help me with something. Mm -hmm. But I just take it as mansplaining no matter what. I've just learned to just tune that out. Yeah. You know, tune it out. Tune it out. Now I'm just angry about mansplaining the term. <laughs> Partners splain. Yeah, you're right. Partner splaining. Partner splain. Right? Yeah. They splain. I agree with you. Okay. Next one from Anonymous. Hey, good guys. <laughs> so my name is Sadie. Um, long time moron here. <laughs> uh, shout out Panda Air. Anyway, um, I'm calling or recording in to ask, uh, you know, mother-in-laws. So we have the first grandchild of both sides of the family. And I'm just calling because, you know, the mother-in-law has just been saying some weird things, kind of gets under my skin. And she did something the other day that was kind of crossing a line to me. Um, so, you know, she's saying goodbye to our son and she kissed him on the mouth and multiple times and you know we've all known it's been an, you know been a spoken thing never to kiss you know the baby on the mouth he's a year now you know we don't even kiss him on the mouth you know uh so i thought it was kind of weird kind of disrespectful you know in the moment i kind of froze i didn't really know what to say um and then she also you know says these things she said to me before to him you know oh you don't love your mother <laughs> Or, oh, don't look at your mother. Look at me. Look at me. Don't look at your mama. Look at me. Which, you know, it, it's, it's now getting to a point where I'm like, what? Do I just allow her to keep saying these things and just ignore it? You know, I did tell my husband about it, and he noticed the whole kissing thing and said, yeah, it's kind of weird. You know, next time she does it, I'll... I'll... <laughs> she ran out of time. Okay. Um, me and Bo are kissing parents, and we're a kissing family. And like, we'll probably be kissing our kids when they're adults, you know, like I see David Beckham gets like heat for that all the time. Like when he's like constantly kissing his adult kids, but I'm like, that to me is so not weird. Mm -hmm. So if I like, if my mom or Bo's mom is kissing my kid on the mouth, like I truly don't think that's, that's weird, but that's just because that as parents, parent. yeah, we're kissing parents. Sure. If you are not, and you, she herself said, we don't even kiss our kids mouths. How do you stay away? First of all, like my kids mouths, I'm so obsessed with. Like, I wish I could just like fully make out with them. Like the, <laughs> the smell of their mouths it. and their spit. I've just like literally like I just cannot stop kissing them. Like the restraint that you have to have to not like make out with your children. Um, <laughs> so if that's their vibe, if they're yes. like non kissing parents, then I would have thought that that would that would be something that you just you tell everyone you got you make your parent like once you have a kid you make rules as parents and when you have your kid you kind of like announce them what the rules are to people like hey yeah. you can't post my kid on social media unless i approve of it first like i i've told everybody that like you should have said we're not kissing parents so you're not going to be a kissing grandma it sounds to me like she said that yeah, it sounds like she did, sa it, it sounds to me like she has a very toxic grandma. Well, that if the grandma is telling the granddaughter, you don't love mommy, you love me. Okay, well that's no, that's like I, really? I didn't get there yet. Yeah, that's real, fucked up. Fucked up. Which, that's beyond. No, but that just tells me that this woman is fucked right. Up. And the kissing on the mouth, because she said the kid's only a year, it made me think that it was for health reasons. Okay, so that. The grandmother wouldn't make the baby sick. sick. Herps. Mm -hmm. Simplex. Yeah, herps. Two. One. Herps. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I think it's, I think the the husband, the father, his, it's his mother. Yes. He needs to step up to the plate and have a conversation. This shouldn't be on the mom. Time to mansplain. Right now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like this guy's a real beta simp. Yeah. <laughs> and he needs to grab his balls and say, Ma, enough. <laughs> like and and we talked about this on the last podcast. It's it only has to be uncomfortable once. Yeah. If you do it right, mm -hmm. it's uncomfortable once, yes. and whatever comes of it comes of it. But no good. Correct. And it's all his fault, ma'am. It's all your husband's <laughs> fault. It is. 
Yeah, agreed with that. It is really hard, though, like to tell your mom what to do as a as a a man. As a man, it's hard. Get it together. Oh my god! It's hard. It doesn't have to be. It's hard. I'm fortunate that I have such like an incredible mother that is so boundary respect. Like she's the best. But so maybe that's why it's hard. But. It's hard. I do it, but it hurts. Ba- it hurts. Boundaries are my favorite thing in the world. Boundaries it's are actually hot. like it's my my greatest hobby, establishing yeah. boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries are hot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I my wife, when we were getting married, my mother, the mother in law, you know, it's it's tradition sometimes for the in law, the 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 groom's parents to do like the night before, right? Sometimes they'll mm-hmm. like plan the engagement party or they'll do like a night before party or they'll they'll cater the rehearsal dinner right. so that they have a little something because usually the bride's family does everything else. Which is kind of fucking annoying. Yeah. Like, just like, not just for throw me. that out there. I agree. Not for <laughs> us. My, but my wife was literally like, stay away. I was like, gotcha. So my mother being the fabulous Jewish mother that she is and she's wonderful, we had a smallish wedding, like a, around 120 people, not like crazy. And so the night before, my mother goes, I've planned a small gathering of 110 <laughs> for the night before for the rehearsal dinner. It said someplace called, I don't know, Whiskey Pete's. And like, and my wife, when I told her, she like had, she had a spasm. She's like, that's a, that's a wedding before the wedding. Yes. Like, it's just. To, and it was no, it was my mom trying to be so lovely and nice. Mm-hmm. And my wife just being like, no, no, like I want 12. Like, I just want the people in the wedding mm-hmm. there. And we can't have a mini wedding before the wedding. Like right. literally 10 people less. And I just looked at my mom and I was like, I said to my wife, I was like, gotcha. Gotcha. Check it off. the You, you don't worry about this anymore. I said, ma, cancel it. She said, I already put in the deposit. I said, you mean I did? I was paying. And, <laughs> <laughs> and my mom was cool and it was done. Good on you. Fuck Good yes. on you. It's just, a, it's a small moment that can be a little awkward, but but your wife knew in that moment, yeah, this is the guy I'm marrying. He <laughs> yeah. has my back. Yeah, you've got her back. How do I remind her of that seven years later? It's, you gotta, tell her to listen to this t- episode. This epi- you gotta, you gotta, <laughs> You got to tell Barb to go f*** herself again. <laughs> said, Mom. You set a calendar in my once a year. F*** you. Mom, I'm putting you on speaker. Babe, come here. <laughs> Mom, put your life alert on. You're not going to like this. <laughs> um, okay. She listens to every episode. Every episode. She's All the right. best. Here we go. Next one. Hi, guys. My name is Daniela. I'm from Florida. And I am hoping to get some advice from you about wedding related stuff. My fiance and I are two months away from our wedding day. And everyone I ever talk to just tells me that it goes by really quickly and it's over before you know it. We're very excited for our big fat Jewish wedding. (laughs) And if you just have any tips or tricks on how to really enjoy it and be present in the moment, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Thank you. Wow. Oh, we can all, we can all be Okay, so you guys are probably going to have to offer up a little more advice than I am because I had a small destination wedding. So Where? Rome. Oh, beautiful. Mm-hmm. Only like 30 people. Mm-hmm. And so it was just a... Every, it's different. It's, it's completely different. Okay. Uh, but I will say the only advice that I can offer up is to just have the mentality of being selfish. Mm. Like, really, what is it in that moment on your wedding day and at your wedding that you want to be doing? Like, don't feel the pressure like I have to go say hi to this person or I have to do. You don't have to fucking do anything. Mm. You just be you what you want to do with your partner and live your best fucking lives for one day. Be selfish. I had the polar opposite wedding. I, had, I know. I had 400 beautiful yentas. Like, oh my God. I don't I, know 400 York. people. Yeah. Um, we know 800 people. Like so how? Like even that prop. How? I think it's just Jews, really. It's fascinating. Jews, Jews know Jews who know Jews. And like, <laughs> it just, it is what it is. Um, and I would say that uh, Claudia would, op- like, she would openly say this. She was not present at all she was obsessed with 
oh, uh, the uh, hors d'oeuvres are coming out five minutes late. I need to know why they're coming out five minutes late. And we had a, had a wedding planner. So what I would say is uh, if you don't have a wedding planner, get a wedding planner and hand it over to her. Yeah. And whatever happens, happens. Like nobody Correct. nobody that's at your wedding is gonna notice. Can, knows what your plans were for the wedding. So if something were to hypothetically go wrong, mm -hmm. the only person who knows that it went wrong is you. Yeah. Like it's just a party. Go have a great time. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. I wouldn't get too drunk. Like that would be one piece of advice. I, I keep hearing about people that like get blackout at their wedding mm -hmm. and then yeah. they don't remember they don't, anything. And they don't eat. That you don't eat. That's true. And then, and then even if you have the best night of your life, you don't remember anything. So yeah. like, try to just remember that you actually can have fun without drinking. Like that does exist, <laughs> especially <laughs> especially when you're getting married. Like you're high on just, right. you have a room full of people that are here to support you. Um, you're you're making hopefully a wonderful decision. Um, and she, she sounds like she's in like a good headspace. Like two months out from our wedding was fucking mayhem. Really? Yeah. If for again, we were throwing yeah, a, no, I can't, a very, I'm, very large affair. Yeah. With v very uh like with seating chart, like just just so, so can much I ask, stuff. Ask you at your wedding, yeah. Did you go and see every person? Did you see every per every guest? I saw every single guest that I could without so no. stressing myself out. Like, okay. I, like I wasn't like, I didn't have like a checklist. Like, oh, I haven't seen like my dad's ninth cousin. Like I need to go find him. Yeah. And he was there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, no, I didn't. I saw as many people as I could. Okay. Yeah. Because or maybe I, I did. I don't know. Like I wouldn't know who I missed. Like I that just, makes sense. I just like can't imagine having a wedding and just feeling so overwhelmed with having to go and say hello and make sure that you. you it's their like, job to say hello to you. But th th still, it's annoying because like you're constantly being tapped on the shoulder. I, I, I'd literally be like, leave me the fuck alone. It's my wedding night, yo. Totally. Like, some, of, <laughs> some of them are also like small like dances. Like somebody will just like you're dancing and then they'll grab you and they'll dance with you for like six seconds. And that's the hello. OK, this is my this is what I, I can't fathom. Yeah. Having to do this 400 times oh my god i'm so glad you're here no i don't do 400 that. times no because you're not always happy that they're there you're like hi good to see you you still Thanks you have to greet 400 400 times for sure it's a job yeah it's a job it's not for me i understand yeah and your your version sounds wonderful my version came with more checks <laughs> small wedding season well, it is what it is um should we get to what are you nuts yes Please. So, uh, are do you we, know what this is? No, it's your gripe currently with people, places, and things, small or huge. Anything that is sticking in your craw that's annoying you. Okay. Ben and I will start. So you have time to think about it. Okay. There is no big. There's nothing too big or too small that is nuts. Whatever. Okay. Just gets you going. Okay. Um, should I start? You want me to? Start? Uh, I, I'm yeah. Um, I, okay. M uh, what, what has recently been, uh, very interesting to me is parents get very specific about, um, fixing their kids at a certain age, like their grammar and their, like all these little things about like really adulting them. And I think you need to embrace when you're, my son will say th certain things like, I'll be like, did you enjoy that? He'll go, yeah, really much. And I'll be like, that's fucking cute. Like, <laughs> he's gonna fix it in like three months and I'll never hear really much again. Or like, uh, oh, he, he said up until like four years old, dad, I was really missing for you. And I'm like, I love this. So recently something about Jesus came up. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and I was like, uh, and somehow I was like, you know what? Do you know who Jesus is? And he goes, yeah. And I go, who is it? He goes, he shoots love arrows. My son thinks Jesus is Cupid. Cute. And you know what? I'm I, I think I'd be nuts to fix that. That's cute. And if you think about it, Jesus is Cupid like. You know, <laughs> yeah, fictitious. Le leads with love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So don't overcorrect your kids. I think that's my what are you nuts? Yeah, what are you nuts? <laughs> um mine is completely different. I went down uh to the lobby of my hotel this morning to get the complimentary cold brew. Because they have a cold brew station. Lovely, That's right? impressive. Yeah, isn't that nice? It's never LA. cold brew. Cold brew. Wow. Fantastic. I, the Kimpton. Cut that out. <laughs> Actually, no. Leave it in. This will air yeah, afterwards. Might... And I want free stays. Yeah, I, I was just okay. about to say that. Yeah. I'll leave it in if you give me a free stay. Shout I'll send it to you before. And otherwise, <laughs> we're striking it. Like, um, cold brew in the lobby. Cold brew machines are often connected, for whatever reason, to kombucha machines. 
I don't know if you've seen this, but it all comes from the same pipe. So there's a kombucha machine, which I guess is supposed to go live during kombucha hours, maybe like five to 12. And the cold brew machine is nine to five. Okay. I go, I, I like barely notice the kombucha machine, but kombucha, that's a whole separate, what do you nuts? Kombucha is fucking disgusting. I don't know why people drink it. I don't know how people drink it. I love it's it. It's absolutely disgusting. You would. <laughs> disgusting. I take my cold brew. I put in a little, just like a drop, a half and half, Splenda. I get up to my room and take a sip. Kombucha. That's... Fucking kombucha. The wires crossed in my cold brew. And all I have to say, what are you, nuts? That is like, it's, it's quite possibly the worst mix up because of how strong that kombucha taste is. And I had it with half and half and it was disgusting. And I realized this actually isn't positive for the Kimp and so they won't be giving me any for taste. Oh, <laughs> shit. Yeah. Bleep it out. Bleep Nasty. It out. <laughs> Nasty. I'm sorry that that happened to you. Thank you. Truly. <laughs> um, I mean, I could actually go on forever. Should I list just one? Well, however many you want. Yeah, All right. You. We're going to go with the first one. This is a hot take. I'm going to I'm gonna ruffle some feathers. People aren't going to like it. Yeah. <sighs> People who call themselves baby whisperers. Mm. there's nothing that annoys me more when I'm holding my baby out somewhere and someone comes up to me and says, let me take your baby. I'm a, like, if he's fussing, I'm a baby whisperer. I'm like, so is that just code for like, I can fucking do this better than you? Like it just, what makes you a baby whisperer? Also the people who like, you're just consistently rocking the baby. You're like doing what we're doing. You're not doing anything different. Don't say you're the baby whisperer. I just, I don't like it. It's just, it's not yeah. for me. That is such a good what are you nuts? It's Baby dis- whispers. It's disgusting. Be- it's, it's grotesque. Dis- it's disgusting. You're going to come up to a mother and tell her that you can soothe her baby better than her? And yeah, I know may- that maybe, they- maybe because you soothe the baby once every six months. You're the baby whisperer. Yeah, maybe you have more patience with this baby because you get to give this baby back to me. That's right. You know? And so I just, I don't like it. Maybe you are good with babies, but just don't say it to me. Fuck off. And just the act of whispering to a baby. Like, you know, like, <laughs> I know that's not what a baby was is, but it did make me think kind of literally. That's funny. That's funny. Um, I mean, I could, I, I, I like talking about things that bother me. You can go more. Yeah, give All us right. another. Um, when I'm really excited to like, you know, binge watch a show and then I find out it's on Apple Plus, you know? Mm, wow. That fucking sucks mm. when it's not on Netflix. Like that really, it's a day ruiner. Are you Netflix dedicated? You don't entertain other streamers? Oh no, I 100% entertain all streamers. Yes. I just prefer to binge something. It's like, I only get, I, you know, waiting a week. Mm. It's just, it's not for me. You Understood. know, like if I have one night where I'm like, wow, the kids are down. I have three hours to burn. Let me watch three fucking episodes. And if I wait and hold them, then I'm behind and everyone's talking about these episodes. So it's yes. like, you know, just make TV bingeable. What are you watching right now? Um, are you binging anything? No, there's like nothing out. I'm waiting for all of these period pieces to come out. You know, the Gilded Age just finished. Mm-hmm. And then what was that other one? What that other one that finished at the same time? The Buccaneers. I was like living my best life for like a good two months because I had the Gilded Age and the Buccaneers. And now I just feel empty inside. Mm. The writer's strike just like all of that. Yeah. Claudia and I don't watch anything current. She watches the current stuff. She's watching The Crown. Yes. Yeah, and, I'm- <laughs> and I'm watching The O.C. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, really. Really fascinating. So fucking good. We just finished Gossip Girl too. They're kind of in the same. Thing. Wow. Mm-hmm. Okay. You mm-hmm. did a GG rewatch. So Huge. good. What are your thoughts watching it back <clears throat> now? Like, how long has it been since you had watched it? Uh, since it came out. So is that ten years? Does Claudia know how lucky she is to have a husband that wants to watch Gossip Girl? By the way, tell her. Tell I her. She will. probably does. I will it. send her a it's text. So good. Uh, Serena's <laughs> so fucking stupid. She. She's so stupid. Ben. And like the fact that. I'm no. sorry. I love Blake Lively, but the fact that she built a career off of such a stupid character. No. She's so stupid. No, she is the villain. She's the villain. The, no, this is how I feel. And they, also, sometimes, like with Banner Pump Rules, people thought I was the villain. People thought Blair was the villain. We weren't. Who's the villain? Who's Hot the villain? Tip. Come on. <laughs> you can't not. You just walked right into that. Who is it? You teed it up. Well, I think an obvious choice is Tom Sandoval. I think that's, that's, an, an, obvious, obvious that's an obvious choice. choice that's but, a layup. Honestly, everyone else but me was the villain. Okay, yeah. I think that's really fair, and you Thank heard it. Here it first. was really fair. Thank yeah, you. I think that's really fair. Thank you. What a, that uh, the new show Valley just just sort of premiered or they they debuted it. They announced it. Any thoughts, feelings about this new spinoff business? Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you so much for being here, Stasi. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you want to plug? <laughs> um, uh, no, if you if if you like me and you haven't heard me before, you can go listen to my podcast, Straight with Stasi. Yeah. That's Excellent. It. Thank you guys for having me here. Thank you. This for was coming. fun. It was fantastic. <laughs> this episode was five stars like all the other episodes. They're all five stars. Rate, review, and subscribe. If you don't give it five stars, what are you nuts? Apple Podcasts, Spotify. You would probably know more places where they can find it. But any of the places where we're streaming, find us. Watch us on YouTube. Josh's YouTube. You'll find this. Uh, I mean, we were better on video. Stasi looks beautiful. I look beautiful. Josh looks beautiful. Thank these you. are three beautiful people. I specifically yeah. didn't wear my headphones so that I could look prettier. Yeah, these totally. are three beautiful people. Hopefully we get some good clips. Yeah, I you know, appropriated this shirt from a Native American community. <laughs> you so did. feel free to cancel me. <laughs> it's just Ralph Lauren, guys. It's a, it's a beautiful Navajovian shirt. <laughs> I, like it. Navajovian. I like it. I like it. Really, it was Ralph Lifshitz who, uh, who appropriated that shirt, not you. So it's, it's not your okay. fault. Thank it's his you fault. So much. It's his fault. Shout out, Ralph. 